Praise the Lord, saints. Happy New Year's to you. May God be with you in a special way. In Jesus' name. Thank God for his grace and, and his mercy. Well, we thank God for allowing us to be on another Zoom service um, on this night. Um, and we praise God in all is well. Continue to pray one for another that God will be done in our life. And we just thank God for his His blessings. Because I tell you, it's a, it's a time that we need the Lord like never before. We always need him. It's like one of these times that we live in. It's like, uh, what's going to happen next? You know, what's, what's the going on next? So we praise God for it. just his grace. At this time, we want to just welcome you to uh, Bishop Thomas L. Fowler, Bishop T. L. Fowler, a Zoom service that uh, we come on every uh, Wednesday night um, from 7 to 8. And we welcome all those that want to be a part of this ministry. This is a ministry. And we believe in divine healing. We, we believe in divine uh, sanctification. We believe in holiness and holy living. Uh, we, we believe in the drug, drug free, alcohol free uh, worship of God. We don't believe in uh, things that will contaminate or destroy this temple because this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we recognize that it is God's temple. And we recognize him as our Savior. Amen. And we're glad to have you on tonight. And I thank God for all that he's doing in this season. Yes, it's in this season we thank God for. That's all he is doing. Praise God tonight. And hope you are doing well. And we are waiting for those who are coming on to be with us in a few moments. And if you if you have a special prayer, uh, special prayer, come on tonight and let us go before the Lord in prayer for you. We're also praying for a good friend of mine, Reverend Keys out of Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, we talked to him today and we that he wanted us to go in prayer for him. Uh, and also our Reverend Downer, and he is uh, praying for him. He's in Texas and one is in Michigan. And we just pray. This is our job. And we enjoy what God has allowed us to do. Just pray for the righteous. And, and the righteous does unveil much. These are men of God that it, uh, God has used over the years. Uh, pastors, great churches, and um, all of us are going through uh, something. One of the, something or the other. We, we're all going through something, and we just praise God uh, for His grace. And we thank God for my wife being all of us tonight. Uh, <clears throat> God's been good to us. We thank God for the safe travel um, to Washington, back to Veterans Memorial, uh, 50 years anniversary to be 50 some years. Vietnam veterans had a celebration for those men and women that gave their life for this country. We praise God for them. Um, I pray for Dr. Quick and his family and um, uh, Mr. Crave and his family. We just thank God for people of God. I ask my wife if she would give us a scripture on tonight. If I can read from this, Jesus first for women. If you read it, fine. Those are scripture. <laughs> Those are scripture. And it comes from Colossians 3 and 12. Mm -hmm. And it says, Hardness of heart has no place in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not instruct us to love some and hate others. He told us to love others as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that includes our enemies. He showed us how to extend mercy instead of vengeance. Mm -hmm. Justice is his, and it is not our right as his heirs to judge others more harshly than we do ourselves. These are fruits of the Spirit, which is compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, and meekness, and patience. Amen. Though we may naturally tend toward pride, self-protection, and rushed conclusions, the way of Christ is different. 
Let us follow his path with love as we do. We will be transformed into his likeness. Amen. That is from Colossians 3 and 12, the ESV version. Amen. We thank God for the, the reading of his word truly. Uh, we need all this and more. We can't get enough of God's word. And we praise God for that scripture on tonight. And if you would lead us in prayer, we appreciate it. Father in heaven, tonight we come to you as humble as we know how. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercies. Yes, Thank Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much that you died on the cross yes, for us. Lord. That we might have that right to the tree of life. Yes. That we, that you've given us the chance to get it right. We just thank you, Lord, for all the things yes. that you are to us. How you wake us up in the morning. You bless us to go about our daily activities. We thank you for the ministry that you give us daily to be a blessing to others. Yes. We just thank you, Lord, for all things, for making a way, for giving us the benefits to be able to do what mm. we need to do in your ministry. Oh God, we count it down in Jesus' name that everything is going to be all right. Everything is in your hands. We thank you, Lord, for our leaders. We ask you to bless them in a special way. We ask you to encourage hearts. Bless our pastor. Continue, Lord, to keep him in your way, in your will. Oh God, help him and bless him to be encouraged to know that what he is doing, given the word of God, is what we need in this day and time. Oh God, bless the saints that they may stay focused and on one accord to love one another. And those that are sick and afflicted, as you are blessed in Jesus' name. Oh God, somebody right now is not doing well. Somebody is losing life. Because somebody is discouraged. We ask yes. you to touch hearts right now in the name of Jesus. We love you right now. We count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Truly, truly. We also remember the Pinks family, a lot of Pinks, and uh, my husband as they uh, go going through and remember the children that's taking care of them. There's a lot we can pray for uh, today. We, we are praying much uh, for the people of God because of sickness all over the place. And But God is a healer. And we want to continue to pray for the sick and shut in. All those are going through right now but we believe the lord uh like i, said, I got a call today from a uh, pastor friend of mine in michigan that has been through a tra traumatic experience i found a tumor uh in his, in his head and he was able to move the tumor uh but he still has some paralysis on one side left side and we're praying for him um that he will get back strong uh, great man of God. We've preached for him several times in Michigan, and we pray for him and his family, his wife. He called for prayer on today, and we're just praying that God, a seven day turnaround. Also, we're also praying for, um, also for Reverend Downer down in Texas. Uh, we talked to him, uh, it went through a storm, a physical storm, but God is a healer, and I just thank God. Uh, how God worked miracles and signs and wonders. I thank God for the saints that kept things going while we were out of town. Uh, we thank God for that, uh, that God will continue to pray and those that are being blessed, the Lord. We pray also for Dr. Mel. He called and he's been real busy. And his wife is Dr. William Mel. We pray for them and their son uh, also and his daughter. Uh, as I was praying, um, uh, they dropped my spirit. We got to continue to pray one from the other. Our children, our grandchildren, we, we just got to pray that God will continue to bless our families. Amen. Amen. I tell you, it is praying time. Amen. If you know the word of prayer, pray for me. If you don't have anything else to pray for, pray for me. Amen. Amen. We praise God for what he is doing in this season. I tell you, I just thank God for Another day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. What about you? I mean, I'm rejoicing. And uh, I'm not mad. I'm not sad. I thank God for every blessing. Uh, not financial blessing, not wealth. But uh, none of these natural things. I just thank God for being alive and well. Being able to read, write, 
So many people can't read, can't write, can't see, can't hardly get around. But I hey, glory to God. I thank God for every day uh even me to do what I need to do in Jesus' name. I believe God is going that He's gonna do some just some awesome things and just um okay, this week, this seven day turnaround. Seven day turnaround. Saints um, people of God who listen to me today. I've been praying to God for a five, seven day turnaround. Jesus built everything you see to create the world in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. And I believe the seven day turnaround starting today. We talked about Ms. Mother Pastors about the seven day turnaround. Praise God. Somebody let me tonight. You are waiting for a turnaround in your marriage, in your home, relationship. I believe God, hallelujah, is going to send a seven, hey, seven day turnaround starting today. Seven days, you expect your miracle, your turnaround. Praise the name of Jesus. And I believe God is in the, it, it's already start uh, working in somebody's uh, life right now. I believe things have already begun to change, hallelujah, for the better. You ever think you want to say first later? I'm truly feeling blessed and highly favored of the Lord. You know, God is good. His name is so worthy to be praised. Yes. I feel like you, uh, Bishop. I just I just feel like God is going to do something special. You can't quite put your hands on it. Yes. But it's just this good feeling that you have. And I just praise God for the young people that were baptized yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. That the Lord will continue to work in their life. Mm. You know, because these are Pureless times, but the Bible says that we are supposed to be a light you know, before men, that our body is supposed to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. So, you know, this is my daily prayer as I walk this life that my light will shine and somebody may see a mm. me. So, I'm loving the Lord, I'm loving ministry. I am just more in love with ministry than I was yesterday. I'm Loving the Lord with all my heart. Because God is truly vicious. He is. He's so, you know, I was, the Lord has been dropping names in my spirit. Um, I keep mentioning a name, uh, I call a name, but I keep telling my wife, the Lord keep dropping this young lady in my spirit up in Maryland. And just kept dropping the spirit and different ones, God been dropping names, dropping names in my spirit to pray for them, pray for them. I don't know what they're going through. But, you know, God, when God drops somebody in your spirit, just begin to pray. You don't need to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying, first lady? We don't need to know particulars. God deals with particulars. But And, and I began to just pray for these individuals that God put in my spirit. God just don't put people in my spirit for nothing. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when he does, and, you know, I, I just thank God for, I thank my wife for doing ministry today. Uh, someone that is not a member of our church. That that was sick, and she went and uh, went to minister with them. So we got a lot of work to do, saying just not at Smyrna, but wherever God direct your path, wherever God send you to that need, praise God. I thank God for it. You know, as we went to a meeting on in Washington D.C. on our, this weekend, last weekend, uh, met a lot of uh, set a great trip. But the main thing, the people we care with us, they needed a a relief. They need to get out. They need a way. So we drove them uh, to the meeting in Washington. And we had five that had tickets for five that we got in uh, this wonderful place in Washington, D.C., close to the White House, the Capitol. And we just had a great time uh, fellowshipping. The fellowship was in the car. You know what I mean? The fellowship was just being with the saints. And we don't ever know what saints are going through. What you say about this is yeah. And and to, just to get away in the fellowship, it it sometimes just the saints, not in a church setting, but sometimes just invite someone out to to dinner. One of the saints, you know, and, and uh last time he got got with the saints went out uh, to dinner and invited out to Dr. Miller's birthday celebration. I mean, we need to do more interacting with each other on away from the church, but just fellowship. I tell you, it was powerful uh, that we had that, and uh, it was just great. And 
it wasn't a meeting we went to, but it was a fellowship of those that needed fellowshipping. Uh, one person, they hadn't been out. They always in the house a lot. Don't get out much. But they got a chance to sit back and ride and enjoy themselves. And the thing about it is I didn't even get tired. I drove off the way wash, never got tired. God has given us added strength because we have work to do, people of God. We are there to serve others, not to be served. They said, he that is great among you, let him be a servant. See, a lot of pastors and preachers, that's their thing. But we supposed to serve. We supposed to serve those. Jesus served. He washed the disciples' feet. Are we more than Christ? No. He told Peter, no, Lord, don't wash my feet. He said, Peter, if I don't wash you, your feet, you have no part in this. He said, well, I wash my head, wash me all over. So we, as people of God, our ministry is bigger than just the pulpit or in the building or singing or preaching, whatever. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in the kingdom of God. I thank God for, um, and we haven't stopped since so we've been back. We've been steady moving, doing things. My wife keeps our projects going, <laughs> keep our projects going. But I thank God we're able to do it and able to serve those that need to be served. And you have anything you want to say? Uh, anybody online, um, Zoom, have anything you want to say before going to the Word of God? If you have a prayer request or something uh, that you want to be prayed with, maybe as a family member, you don't have to call on names. But if you want to just say, I have someone that needs prayer, that's all you have to say. If you want it, this is your opportunity at this time. Anyone, the clock is ticking. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to thank and praise the Lord for another opportunity to join Bible study. Um, thank you, Pastor Father, for your prayers. And I'm just a witness that the Lord is going to do something great. He's already doing great things in our lives, but I'm believing with you and Sister Fowler um, that the Lord is going to do exceedingly abundantly. We can't even think about it, Sister Fowler said, what the Lord is going to do, but I'm just praising him in advance for the miracles that he's going to show us at Smyrna Church in our families and in the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone else? Okay, no one else. We're going to move on um, in the word. Patient is a virtue. I'm learning to have more patience in my old age. <laughs> Amen. I thank God for patience. And we, uh, you have anything else? A song, anything? I'm learning to have patience. Uh, tonight, we had started on this text, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 1. 1 Timothy 2, book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2. And this first verse one through eight is dealing with the Ephesus church. And the Ephesus church had ever stopped praying for the laws. So many churches are they stopped praying for the laws and a lot of other things. But this church, but especially this church of Ephesus, had come, they had came and they, and it's, it was showing it evidence showing that. Really, they had stopped praying. And, and praying is a, a key element. It's the most powerful element. It's one God gave us the power of prayer. But more important than the power of prayer is the answering of that prayer. Would you agree? We pray and pray and pray, but we want to answer. But he here they was, they stopped praying for the laws, Ephesus, book of the church of Ephesus. Now, Paul urged Timothy to uh Make it prior uh, and made it a priority again to pray. He said, again, that means they had stopped praying. But he said, you have to make this a priority. I don't pray enough. I'll be honest. I should pray more. Maybe somebody, well, I pray a lot, but I, I need to pray more. Sometimes you get busy and don't pray like you should. 
But we, that should be, and I start uh, praying in the morning. Well, not, not that I get praying at night before I go to bed. In the morning when I come out of bed, I fall on my knees and pray. I feel the urgency of prayer. Maybe someone else don't tonight, you listen to me, but I do. But these people at Ephesus stopped praying for the laws. The Judaizers, false teachers in Ephesus, by pre-venture uh, the, the gospel and the, the teaching that salvation is only for the Jews. And Gentile, the one was had came into Jewish faith, was only one uh, about praying. And they restricting uh, the uh, vandalistic prayer. They want to just create their own style of worship and prayer. But prayer is a sincere heart desire unto the Lord. It's something that you really, really, really need or want. Not just praying for money, cars, clothes, and things. I'm talking about praying for the lost. Pray for the sick, the dying. That's why I say God has put several people in my spirit this week already. I don't know why, but I began to just internalize prayer for these individuals. Religion, salvation, only for the elite. They feel like it was only for the elite. The need of prayer for the lost precluded the need of the prayer, not even concern. And a lot of time, I don't know about you, but sometimes we arrive by people that's on the street begging, not begging, let me rephrase that, um, out there trying to get money for whatever. Some people may be down, need food, shelter, whatever. Some people have other conditions. But sometimes we look at them and say, well, they need to get a job. Or they need this, that, and the other. And we forget about the power of really praying. Even, even for the mind of that individual. <clears throat> Maybe they, they are having some mental struggles. Or family struggles. Maybe they got lost their job. Maybe they got put out. We don't know. But God knows. That's why it's so important not to be judged mental. And just pray. It's not for the elite. Not for the powerful. Not for the strong. But it's for the weak as well. Now, 1 Timothy 2 and 1, he said, I exalt, therefore, first. I exalt, therefore, first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks he made for all men. So he didn't exclude anyone. Not even, the, it's why people say, well, sin, even the sinner the downtrodden, the liar, the homeowner, whatever, you can exclude them and from praying. They need prayer. So that's why we had prayed for them and we and he exalted. Therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks he made for all men. He said just the saved, the righteous, the unrighteous, for all men. He's, he's a first of all, or most importantly of all, prayer is to hold the preeminent place in church meetings. Four different types of prayer are mentioned here. Four types of prayer. One, supplication are precisely requested for a special need. The Greek word is from, is from a root word meaning to lack, to be deprived, or to be without. So they prayed for the, this specific prayer for, uh, for needs. The like to be deprived or to be without. Thus, this kind of prayer occurs because of the need. The laws have a great need for salvation. And believers should always be asking God to meet that need. Hallelujah. Praise God. Two, prayer 
is a general word embracing various kinds of prayer, confession, adoration, and so on. So these words come from the root word to fall in without someone or to draw near as to speak intimately the very from which the word derives is used for Christ and the spirit of intercessions of all for the believers in Romans 8 26 and Hebrews 7 25 First, let go to Romans 8.26 in your Bible. So here he's dealing with this first supplication to prayers. And, and in general, words embracing various kinds of prayers. Confession, adoration, and so on. So we are just on what we don't just pray one specific prayer, but we pray for different needs, different situations. You have it? 8, 26. 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Amen. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm. Sometimes you can be going to a situation, people of God, that you don't even know what to pray for. You're so messed up spiritually. You, you're just down and you don't know what to pray for. You, I've been there. Maybe you have not been there. But sometimes you just get to the place, Lord, I just don't know what to pray for. So much going on in my world. <laughs> you have been like the first lady. There's so much going on in your world. You don't, have no, you don't know what to pray for. That's why God, he is the seeds into our, into our prayer. He meets us at our needs. He says here, he says, thus the kind of prayer occurs because of a need. The laws have a great need for salvation and believers should always be asking God to meet the need. Whatever that need is, God, please help us and those that are going through a storm. So you have to do it God's spirit in the session of a believer. Now, Hebrews 7, 25, go there. Hebrews 7, 25. Now, here Paul desired is for the Ephesus Christian to have a compassion for the laws. Can you believe that? Church folks, don't have a compassion for the laws. Paul desire is for Ephesus Christian to have compassion for the laws, to understand the depths of the pain or their pain and misery to come to intimacy with to God pleading for their salvation. We don't. Hebrews 7 and 25. Wherefore he is able to save them to the utmost that Lord. come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. See what I'm saying? He is saying here in 725, Paul is like, is the Ephesus in the Ephesus that the Christian have the compassion for the laws. See, it's, uh, it's up to you as a believer. It's up to the church. It's up to the believers in God to pray for the laws. To have compassion and love and a desire for the laws. Amen. And, and and that is Paul's desire was here, have compassion for laws, to understand the depths of their pain and their misery and to come to intimacy to God pleading for their salvation. Now, go to Titus 3, 3 and 4. See, we, we as believers have an obligation to pray for the laws, not just our families, but anytime God put someone into your spirit, pray. Especially when God gives you a name of an individual, pray. You don't have to blast and say things that, that, that that's Titus 3, 3, 4. And, and, and 
like we so this is so spiritual, we're so holy, so righteous. We are just we don't have time for the laws. I am so busy. I have so many Christians. I'm so busy. I, I don't have time. What are you doing? But you're not doing God's work. You're doing your own personal work, your own personal agenda. Well, you know, I'm going here, I'm going there. Yeah, you're going here and there, but what are you doing for the kingdom of God? For the laws, you ready? Titus 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Not because of the righteous thing that you and I have done, because of God's mercy. Praise God. I'll give a hand clap on that one. Hey, glory to God. I wouldn't be saved today if it wasn't for the mercy of God. I would be right now, I would not be here, but God's mercy, God's love for me, even when I didn't have enough sense to love my own self, God loved me. Honest, no limitations, no barriers. See, there's no barriers. God said, Who's your will? Let him come. See, we put up barriers and roadblocks. But unsaved. And, and I've been to churches where they felt you know you, you didn't feel important at all. They I mean, just uh they had a special seating for their membership. They and they they, they didn't even welcome you. They just uh like you were a bother. And the church should never be a bother for no one. A welcome is a welcoming church is a blessed church. I said, a welcoming church is a blessing. When folks learn to welcome people in, that's why a lot of churches have greeters. But that's a good thing. But my thing is, we should have to have somebody to greet folks. We should, all should be greeters. Maybe you disagree with that. But I think everybody, when church is over, our church is whatever, and I need to do a better job of myself. A better job. Get down to the door and greet people as they leave out. Thank them for coming. We all could do a better job. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have no hierarchy in the church. We all saints of God trying to make the glory. Intercession denotes prayer to God on behalf of others. Intercession is denote prayer to God on behalf of others. You want to say on that? Well, thank God for our noonday prayer that we have. That has been such a blessing. You know, the presence of the Lord is there, and the purpose of noonday prayer was to is to intercede on behalf of people. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You're right. And so God's presence have shown. And it is a blessing, and we look to see people's lives changed mm. through intercession, because that's what intercession is, is interceding. Amen. You know, some people can't be there. That's why God will put people in your spirit to pray. They can't be there because they're working or got other obligations. They can't be. They would love to be there. But that's why the intercessions come in at. That's why God has people to intercede in prayer. And God will drop their names within your spirit so you can intercede for those individuals that cannot be there, that would love to be there. So that's what intercession power comes in there, the nose prayer to God on behalf of others. You got it? You understand what I'm saying? Four, giving thanks, reference to prayer and praise. Now, Paul here is now giving some last minute instruction to Timothy. Supplication. In this verse above means prayer or request. Prayer or request to God. In this particular usage, interpretation, or interceding, interce intercession means prayer. Intercessor, prayer to general, generally when you are praying for someone else, not for yourself. This would be the proper use here. Says the prayer. We're all for all men. Uh, now, there may be different 
types of prayer. And perhaps that is what is intended here. There are different types of prayer. And perhaps this is what is meant and intent in this verse. Now, there's prayer for adoration to God. There's prayer for special requests. There's prayer for others. And there are other prayers. I think I love the prayers where I do not want nothing from God. But I just want to wait and I just want to visit with him. Now, these are unusual sweet times. You know, when you just want to, don't want nothing, God. Lord, I don't want, Jesus, I don't want nothing. I just want to be in your presence. I just want to feel your anointing. Just want to be in your presence. You know, some folks, uh, using the natural term, some folks, you, you just enjoy it when you get an opportunity just to be around them. You know, just being around somebody that is really special in your life. Just laugh and talk and, and just enjoy one another. That's the way the Lord wants us to be. Just enjoy the saints. Just be around each other. Just enjoy each other in fellowship. Now, Paul is using um, is, is any, any, any work with Timothy that the church will be just as strong as the prayers that are prayed for it. The prayers, no church will be no stronger than the praying saints, praying saints. Now, uh, in verse 2 uh, through 3, there is three kinds, I mean, I'm sorry, three reasons why prayer of verse 1 are to be offered for all men. One, that Christian may enjoy a tranquility life. A life of tranquility. Two, such prayer is good and acceptable to God in verse 3. Such prayer has bring about salvation of men in verse 4. Timothy 2 and 2 for the kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in godliness and honesty. Now he said, pray for kings and all those that are in authority. Because so many powerful, influential, potential rulers are hostile to God. They are often targets of bitterness but Paul urged believers to pray that these leaders may repent of their sin and embrace the gospel. So Paul didn't leave nobody out. Even the people in authority that you don't like. Paul said he encouraged believers to pray that those leaders or these leaders may repent for their sins and embrace the gospel. Which means that if the, the uh, that Ephesus were even to pray for salvation of the Roman Emperor Nero, a cruel and vicious blasphemer and a persecutor of faith. So I said, well, I ain't gonna pray for that devil. But he said here, which means that the Ephesus in Ephesus. The Ephesians were even to pray for salvation for the Roman Emperor Nero, a cruel and vicious blasphemer and a persecutor of the faith. Even pray for these type folks. A quiet and peaceful life. Quiet refers to the absence of ex external disturbance. To tranquility refers to the absence of internal one. While it remains uncompromising in its commitment to the truth, the church is not to agitate or disrupt 
the natural life or the nation's life. We ought to be a prayer and warring people. We need to pray so hard that people turn from the, the wicked and contrary ways. I mean, it's time, even in the time we live in there with all this stuff going around the world, in our country, I mean, every look, there's something going on. But we have to pray for peace. Peace in the midst of all of what's going on. A peaceful meeting. Not trouble for within. That is the church prayer also aimed to, to compete with the government and maintain a law and order within its borders. Having troubles at the borders. Trans translate godliness, honesty, and unfortunately for the exercise of, of these these. These different circumstances, depending upon good government, they can cultivate even the poor, political, and management of persecution. So even at the border, the crisis at the border, crisis in the states, every turn is crisis everywhere. Every turn, every time you turn the news on, is trouble. The text should read that we, May lead a peaceful life with the utmost reverence uh, and respect. Now, this respect is out the window. You got people going to be facing putting bad things upon the Jewish temples and different places. Putting all kind of mean things into it. People are doing some mean things, but we're praying that God will touch their heart today. Respect can be recognized when rulers and righteous discharge of their duty. But the people in rulership has to be disciplined themselves. So we have a lot to pray for, saints. This world is up. We live in an upside down world. Like wrong is right and right is wrong. Now, chapter three here. Well, this is good, acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, God, and Savior. Now, here, verse two and four. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? Have all men be saved. The word for, for have is not that which normally expresses God's will or, or deed, his eternal ex, eternal pur purpose. But God's will of desire. There is a distinction between God's desire and his eternal saving purpose, which must translate his desire. Now, God wants every man to be saved. God do not mean for men to sin. He hates sin with all his being in Psalms 5, 4 and 45 and 7. Thus, he hates it. Consequently, eternal wickedness in hell. God does not want people to remain wicked forever and eternal worse and, and eternal and remorseful and hate for of themselves, yet God, his own glory to manifest the glory and wrath, choose into a vessel filled with destruction of the supreme fulfillment of his will, Romans 9, 22, and his eternal purpose, he chose only to elect out of the world, and John 17 and 6, pass on the rest, leaving the, the consequence of sin, Unbelief and reject of Christ in Romans 18 and 32. So God is looking for people that will pray. How many of you ask yourself this question? How much do you pray within a week? Not a prayer of want or need, but I mean a sincere heartfelt prayer to God. Ask yourself that question. 
Um, how many, how much time have you spent in prayer since Monday of this week? How much time have you spent with God in prayer? Not asking God for anything, but just praying and being thankful. Yet God, for his own glory, manifests the glory and wrath, chose to endure the, the vessel filled with destruction for the super, supreme fulfillment of his will, Romans 9, 22. And this eternal purpose, he chose only the elect out of the world in John 17 and 6. So ultimately, God's choice are determined by his sovereignty, eternal purpose, not his desire, as in 2 Peter 3 and 9. So God wants all men to be saved. We have to pray, saints of God. I don't know about you, but I, I, I just feel the need more and more of prayer. And people, you know, we pray when we need something. We pray when we're sick. We pray when we're hurting. But you just pray and just thank God for the things as well as they are. Just pray that that our loved ones will get saved. Pray for that that mean supervisor or boss. God will touch the heart. They may change and turn away from the way they're going. If you pray and you love folks, I've been through that. I've been square. People can be very, very mean, but you love them. You stand up for what is right, and they see, and they apologize to you by the what they, how they treat you, how they mistreat you. In other words, when you see from the following scripture just how important it is to the Lord for all men and all to be saved. John 3 and 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What is the knowledge of the truth? Is a knowing Jesus Christ who is the truth. Knowing Jesus Christ that is the truth. It is God himself who wants all men to be saved. God wants all men to be saved. Verse 5 and 7 says, Thus verse, now this particular verse here had a threefold evidence confirming this accession in verse 4, God does, does indeed want all to be saved. So, now, if you look at Timothy 2 5, it says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. One mediator, Jesus Christ. You can't get to, to God unless you come to Jesus Christ. Because God is a spirit. He's not a flesh. He's not a man. He's a spirit. So, in other words, you got to go to the God man, which is Jesus Christ, to get to the spirit man, which is God. So you got to go through. These will sit down to show man how to get to God. Now, five and seven. And, and we deal with First Timothy 2, 5. There is one God. And, and that media talking about Jesus Christ. There is one God. There is no other way to salvation. Acts 4 and 12. There's no other way to get to the Lord but through Jesus Christ. Acts 4 and 12. Hence there is the need to pray for the laws to come to know the one true Jesus Christ or true God. The mediator is referred to someone who is the to intervene between two parties to resolve a conflict or ratify a, co a covenant. Now, Jesus Christ is the one and the only mediator who can restore peace between God and the Son. Hebrews 8 and 6. Now, the man Christ Jesus the absence of the activities between man 
in the Greek translation or the subject of the Greek translation, Christ Jesus himself, a man, only the perfect God-man could bring God and man together in Job 9.23. Only God could bring man together in Job 9.23. Now, before the cross of Christ, there was no way a man could go directly to God. The temple curtain was closed. And no one could enter except the high priest. He could only enter when he had accomplished by the blood of the sacrifice. He could only go in there when he was accomplished by the blood of the sacrifice. God was the way for man, and it seemed impossible to reach God unless he went this way. But God replaced the in-between, the priest. He became the high priest that we can go to. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, the veil was a temple, was torn down from the top to the bottom, opening a way to a common Christian to get to God. Jesus is the door. He is the way. He's the only thing that we need to reach the Father. We're gonna, we can pray directly to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, and God will hear our prayers. The man Jesus mentioned here because the veil separated the temple was a symbol of the flesh of Christ Jesus. That veil was a symbol of Christ. You got to come through. By the way, Jesus Christ, it is in his crucifixion, the flesh of Jesus Christ, the only way for us and you and I to get to heaven, get to Christ, to the redemption power. You can't get to him unless you come in through the door. So as believers, we, we have a great opportunity to pray for the lost. We have a great opportunity. Time now. It starts in your home. We, we, we start everywhere, but not in our homes. You need to pray. Start your prayer in your own home, your own family. Start in your Jerusalem and your home. And then you start spreading out in the heads and highways. But you got to start your Jerusalem right in your house. Praying for your children. Praying for your family. That's the duty we have to do as leaders of the church. But we first got to start in our own home. Verse Timothy 2 and 6 says, Who gave himself a ransom for us all to be the testimony in due time? It belongs right in our homes, right in our families. Verse Timothy 2 and 7 says, Whereas I am ordained a preacher, an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ, and I lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in the faith and verity. Timothy, first Timothy 2 and 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, live with holy hands without wrath and doubt. He's speaking to them, says, look, we got to get this thing together. We got to do our part. And that means first to start within your own home. Praying for your husband, praying for your wife, praying for your children. Then I think Pray for them and God began to work in them. Then we then we began to move it out, begin to spread. But start at home. Pray in your own home. You can save the world and lose your family. Let's save our family. Let's save our children and grandchildren. Let's proclaim the gospel to them. First Timothy 2 and 9 says, in like manner also, the woman adorned themselves and modest apparel with shamefulness and sobriety and with a braid of hair of gold 
of cost of rain. She was, was beautiful. Got all that stuff together. But she was miss, missing the main part, the beauty of the Holy Spirit. Oh, she looked good. Or, or, or dormant. But what Christ was saying, you look good on the outside, but what about your heart? What about your heart? You got all this adorn on you. You look pretty. Everything looks good. But what about your soul? Do your soul look good as you look on the outside? We are so impressed by the outward appearance, we forget about the inward man that perishes. Let's beautify the Holy Ghost in meekness. First Timothy 2.10 said, But which become a woman professing godliness of good works. But we just become a woman professing godliness with good work. So here Paul is saying, all is good. You look pretty. You're beautiful. Outward adornment. He said, church is place is to go to worship God. It is very important for a woman to dress in modest or, or a manner not to draw attention to herself. A woman's beauty should not be an outward appearance or gold, a pearl, a fancy clothing. Her beauty should be from within. Women who are modest of apparel and in their behavior are a blessing to the church. But it, that's deep. That church is a place to go to worship God. It is a it is very important for women to dress in a manner not to draw attention to their selves. A woman's beauty should not be her outward appearance of gold, apparel, or fancy clothes. Her beauty should be within. Women who are modest in their appear, appearance and appeal in their behavior are a blessing in the church. This was Paul was saying years and years and years ago. First Timothy 2 10 said, But which becometh women professing godliness of good works. Now, those women who have publicly committed themselves to pursue godliness should support that claim not only in their demeanor, wardrobe, and appearance, but by being clothed with righteous behavior. That's not only to women, men as well. And, and and when these writing was written, it was leaning more toward the women. And, and you read and more; it was leaning more toward the women than it was men. But uh, in essence, Paul, and the word God say, all has got to be saved. Whether you're male or female, there's no Greek, no male, no female in Christ. What well, it means, you have to be just as women adorn themselves and modest appear, so is men, not to attract the opposite sex. That's what he's saying. Are you dressed to, to attract the opposite sex? Or are you trying to attract the Lord? Same thing with men. Are you trying to attract, attract the opposite sex? Or are you trying to attract people to the kingdom of God? But be modest. It's not right. It's nothing not to look beautiful. But, but he's saying, don't dress to attract people to you instead of to God. So he's not saying that you can't be beautiful. He's saying that don't dress or present yourself as trying to get attention away from God, but on you. God gives our blessing to the church. We know that. We know that God of women is our blessing. We know it all the way back to Aquila and Priscilla, all through the Bible, women has been a blessing to the church. Ruth, all those women, all you can name them, all through the Bible, was a blessing to the church. Godly women are a real blessing. Godly women are a real blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. 2 Timothy 2 and 11 says, let women learn, learn 
insolvable subjection. Now, I'm going to clarify that. The women's learn to solve. Women are not to be a public teacher when a church assembly, but neither are they to be shut out of the learning process. The form of the Greek translated learn is a imperative. Paul is commanding that women should be taught in the church. He's saying that women should be taught, not silence. Command the women to be taught in the church, not to be shut out of learning process. In Paul's day, it was more toward men. But Paul said, no, don't shut the women out. Godly women are blessed to the church. He just said a statement above. He said, godly women are blessed to the church. Don't shut them out. That's what Paul is saying here. Let women learn in silence. And all they said, don't silence the women. He was saying that. And the context is women are a blessing to the church. Always have and always will be. First Timothy, which I almost threw with this, first Timothy 2 and 12 said, But suffer not a woman to teach, nor suffer authority over men, but to be in silence. I, he said, I suffer not. The Greek word suffer not is used in the New Testament referring to allowing someone to do what he desired. Paul may have been addressing a real situation which several women in Ephesus desired to be a public preacher, to teach. Paul used a verb form of the Greek word that indicates the condition or process is better translated to be a teacher. This was important official function in the church in Acts 13, 1 and 1, Ephesians 4 and 11. Thus, Paul is forbidden women from filling the office of a role of a pastoral teacher. He is not, and he said, he is not prohibiting them from teaching in a other appropriate condition and circumstance, 1826, in Titus 2 and 3. Now, he's breaking it down. He said, your circle of thought, Paul forbade women for exercising a type of authority over man in the church assembly since elders are not those who rule five and seven they are all to be men as is clear from the requirement in three four but silence he would say a woman uh, has a role and do not result as a fall of a creature god perfected desire rhetoric god established the role as part of his original creation so making women out the man to be suitable for a helper. So the fallen conditions. So so if what Paul was saying is women had a power to teach, but ever don't shut the women's out, he was saying. They have the ability. Eve was not suitable for a similar position of all responsibility by leaving Adam Adam protecting un uh, usually a leadership she was vulnerable to fall so women and men have a great role in the house of God that's why we have so many problems now because you cannot shut God's gift out women are a great gift to the body of Christ a powerful gift to the body of Christ that's why women have a role men have a role one role is more important than the other all roles and God's kingdom are valuable. All roles, whatever you do in the house of God, is valuable. No one can devalue you and your service to God. Nobody can devalue you, male or female. God gave us all the saving grace. He gave us the power to live holy and righteous. And that's why you see more women in the house of God than you do men. And you wonder why? It's because that was God's plan. Man need a helper. He made Eve to be the helper for Adam. Adam and Eve. If man was going to do it all, he would need a helper. He would need a sister. But God knew man was lonely and he needed a helpmate. And that woman was a helpmate. 
any man got good sense will never turn around good health, turn off <laughs> good health. And I think my wife has been a blessing in my walk with God and helping me uh, make it through the year. I don't know what I would do without my wife assisting me and being there with me and for me. And I'm sure many others, you know, you can talk about you want. You can dismiss your wife. I'm not going to dismiss mine. I thank God for my wife. Amen. Thank God for her, her, her help. Because women are a gift from God. Because if they were the gift of God, they wouldn't have made Eve. He made Eve to be a helper. I thank God for all the women that's in the house of God, that's serving. Every job is important in God's house. You don't have to be a bishop. You don't have to be a pastor. The greatest works are done not in the house of God, but in the streets. That's what he's saying. Pray for all men to be saved. Many women, many, many women have went out, fed, clothed, brought them in, preached to them, prayed for them. You, you didn't need a pulpit. The pulpit was the streets. Praying for the needs of people. Don't ever forget, you are valuable. All of us, women, men, and children. God needs all of us. Praise God. Pray for me as I pray for you. You have a blessed night. Thank God for listening in. And keep us in prayer, and we keep you in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.